meeting because I was looking online for things and I was looking at prayer because we'll be talking about that as well today and something that I read really struck my heart and it, it this is this is what I read it said the things that you and I take some of the things that you and I take for granted other people are praying for and that really struck my heart because we take a lot of things for granted don't we and yet there will be other people that are really praying desperately for the very things that we just say oh it's part of my life for health for a job for um, for relationships and families and things like that so Lord help us as we move on in him to to remember others and pray God's life and God's blessing in in their lives amen 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 Lord we turn again to your word this morning God I I believe I know that this is your that this is your message for us and so I ask Lord that you would speak to each one of our hearts Lord may not one of us including and I pray for myself be exempt from the the the, uh, the touching and the speaking of your Holy Spirit to our hearts today and may we respond to your word and your truth and be all and do all that you have for us to do we open our hearts to you and our minds and we engage with you this morning in Jesus name amen amen amen, amen. so we're on our third uh, series um, a third uh, lesson in our series how we grow uh, next week Pastor Renee will be speaking so we I, I already know what he's speaking on a little bit um, but uh, so it won't be how we grow so and then I'll be in the States for a pastor's conference for for just a short time so kind of hold on to this today and when I come back we'll keep on going on this we have about maybe three more uh, three more topics to cover in this but we continue today with what we've begun and uh, as we've said before God's desire for us God's will for us his ongoing plan for you and for me in whatever situation and in whatever surroundings you find yourself is growth is growth if you're a baby Christian here this morning God's plan for you is to grow for those of us that would be considered leaders in the church for the pastors for those of you that are have small groups that meet still God's plan is that we will grow when I want us to look at Colossians 1 the next slide and we see some other things um, this is just a reminder I won't go back to in into all of the uh, topics that we've looked at before but this is a wonderful passage Colossians 1 9 and 10 that gives us the whole picture and, and by the way as I'm saying that let me say the same thing too for the youngest ones in here today this is God's plan for you too this is not just a, a message for the grown-ups this this is God's plan for each one of us and we see this prayer and this call of Paul uh, and we were, we're gonna come back to this one later because it gives us a really complete picture about growth and what happens and then as that happens then how we grow and how that process works in our lives so on your own because you have the Holy Spirit in you you can start digging on your own and the Holy Spirit will start speaking to you you don't have to wait for a pastor you know and uh, we see he says so Paul's praying for them and he says then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit whenever you're reading the New Testament and you're reading other areas when you see the writers of the New Testament say something about producing good fruit John 15 when Jesus says I am the vine you're the branches remain in me anyone who remains in me will produce much fruit later on Jesus gives the parable uh, the personally I believe it's the most important parable of the New Testament personally and that is I believe it's the parable of the seed and the sower the parable of the of the of the farmer who went out to plant seed and he talks about at the end result they produced fruit they produced much fruit same thing again whenever you come across things like build you up encourage all of those have to do with growth so it's not always the word grow that you will see you'll see it in different ways but it's the same thing it's the same point this is what God is working towards in your life and you know why I think Paul says so much about this area It's because Paul really had a vision from God of what he wanted for his people and so because of that Paul that's what you see in the preachings and the writings and the prayers of Paul so he says then produce every kind of good fruit that's one of the things that growth will bring in your life and my life it will bring fruit 
and that fruit covers what? Does it include getting, leading other people to the Lord? Yes, it does. But that's not the only type of fruit that God is working towards in our lives. God is also working in your life and in my life to bring forth fruit. And so we see that here. And he says, your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. I like that. Not just one type. Sometimes we focus on one area, right? God is looking at everything in our lives. He wants a complete growth, a complete maturity. And then at the end of this, it says, all the while. Oh, you mean while all of this is going on, all of this is going on and all the while, in the process, at the same time, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. And then the second part, Colossians 2, 7, which I did just the first part. And you'll see sometimes I'll do an A or a B, and I want to mention that to you this morning because I don't want to pull things out of context. But when we use a lot of scriptures at times, I don't always put the whole scripture up because there's so much there and I don't want to overwhelm. But you go back and look at the whole verse in context. So I'm looking just at the first part. And then Paul's prayer for the Colossians. Remember, he's not met them yet. He's only heard about them. And this is his prayer. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. So here's grow and here's built. Same thing again. And then your faith will grow strong. Okay? So here we have this beautiful picture. Roots going down. Do you see roots? Yes or no? No. Usually no. Unless it's uh, orchids. Orchids are plants that usually you see the roots. But generally, roots are the things that are below the ground. But then, where, do, where is the fruit? unless it's a potato or a peanut or something like that. Generally, where is fruit? Up. You see it, don't you? You see it. And yet, it is all growth to God. And I love this picture. Because you know what, brothers and sisters? A lot of times, we're looking for fruit, 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 right? That's what we see. That's what's noticeable. And that we say, oh, that's growth. But in God, there is a growth at times that no one else sees. It's deep in your life. It's going down. And others don't see it. And you may not even recognize it or see it yourself. But God knows and God sees. And if you are going through a time of roots going down and there's not a lot outwardly for others to see, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't say, well, nothing's happening and nothing's going on. God is at work. God is at work. You know, and, and let me just, let me camp on this point for just a little bit further. Years ago, uh, we've, we had some people in our church, goodbye, young people. God bless you as you go to work. They're going to work right now. Amen. Let's keep our attention this way as they go. In Hong Kong, uh, I'll keep going forward. In Hong Kong, so often, um, I, you know, there's so much construction going on in Hong Kong. And they'll put up those red, white, and blue things, and, and the work starts, right? And you hear the machinery, boom, boom, boom. And you see the dust flying everywhere, which is why my car is so dirty right now, um, even though it's been washed. And you see all of this. And you see machines go in and out. But honestly, you don't see much else, do you? Do you see a building going up? A lot of times you don't. What is going on in all of that? What's going on so often? foundations right foundations and you've heard dad speak on this before a wonderful teaching foundations are going down well in the Christian life foundations are roots our foundation our roots and there will be all sorts of things the plan ahead is big but you don't see a lot happening do you because foundations and roots take time they take time and nobody else sees it but God is working and if God is going to produce fruitfulness out of your life, He is going to work to cause your roots to go down in Him so that there will be fruitfulness. No roots, no fruits. That's right. No root, no fruit. That's why I love 
the name of this church, Pastor Huang Le, who spoke with us uh, a year or two ago. And uh, it's got a Chinese name, but the English name, this is in, in Wuhan, uh, of this very vibrant church is what? The Root and Fruit Church. I love that. The, isn't that great? It's the Root and Fruit Church. Guess what, brothers and sisters? That's what God wants for you and for me, too. And so we see this as well. We tend to be kind of one track. Oh, God is not one track. God sees the whole picture, and he's working. He's working, and he is working in every situation. We don't have time to get into it this morning. This is one of the subjects yet ahead. But, you know, you and I, as God works in us to grow us, we want perfect conditions, don't we? Don't you? I want everything just right. I want everything happy in my life. I want all my friends to love me. I want there to be great teaching at church. I want all of this to go on. I want perfect conditions. And then, oh God, I'll be fruitful for you and I will grow. Guess what? God does not wait for perfect conditions to grow us. God is always at work in our lives. And I'll go ahead and tell you now, and we'll come back to it in the future. Usually, the greatest growth and fruitfulness in our lives will come in circumstances and situations that are not perfect. That's right. Ah, you all know that already. Great. It's true. In hard times, in difficult times, in times of testing, in times when you feel pressed on every side. Why is that? Because when I am pressed, and when I am pushed, and when I am, I am in darkness, that is when my soul cries out for the living God. Oh God, I need you. And that's when our roots start going down, right? The surface water, it's not there anymore. We have to go down deep to dig wells and find the Lord and receive. And that's when we grow. That's when we grow. So if you're going through hard times right now, you hang on to God. You hang on to God. And be assured that God is doing His work in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. God wants for you and for me. Next slide. To grow up, as our my brother Peter says, into what? A full experience, a full experience of salvation. I want to pause there just a minute. As I was praying for you last night um, and praying for myself and praying for the message, this was, I was already in bed and I was just, I was lying there and I was praying. And uh, um, as, I was, as I was sitting there and praying, the Lord reminded me of something that I thought, I need, to, I need to say that to you this morning. It wasn't in my notes. I'd already prepared my notes and printed them. And, and the Lord really struck my heart. I thought, I, I, need to, I need to say that. When we talk about growth, as we have these past two weeks and then this morning, and we will again, it's easy to kind of get into the feeling of, oh, this is something that I should do. God wants me to grow. I should be growing. And it feels like a to-do, doesn't it? it? Sometimes it feels like a duty. It feels like a, almost in a way like a, a, a burden. N not a burden, but a, something that I should be doing. And, and it's hard to fight guilt, isn't it? We sort of feel guilty because we look and we think, I've not, I've not grown and I know I should grow. And I know I should grow. I want to say something to you this morning and I want to help you if you're feeling that and thinking that. To look in a different way. Look in a different way. Here you are. You're a Christian. I think most people, most of us here this morning, the Spirit of God is in us. Some of you may be that you're not there yet, you're interested, your heart's open, and you're seeking God. This is for you too. So here we are, we're talking about growth. And we look at it as, I, I should be doing this, and we start feeling guilty because we're not growing as we should. Let the Holy Spirit help you get that out of your thinking and out of your mind. And think about it in the way that God has for you. Here you are, and you and I, even as Christians, have been scarred and broken and limited by sin and a sinful world that we live in. All of us, the best of us. Pastor Renee, Pastor Jennifer, every one of us, we live in a world 
in which the prince of the power of the air, the enemy, still is at work. And though the Spirit of God lives in us and He's working in us, we still bear in our body, in our spirits, and in our souls the marks of sin. In our thoughts, we are pressed so often by the way the world thinks about us, by the limitations of the world. You are this, and you will never be more than this because this was your background. You will never be much more than this because of what you did before, maybe even as a Christian or as a non-Christian. You won't be able to or whatever because this is your economic status, or this is the color of your skin, or this is your status in society or culture or whatever. And we bear, or you have, you came from a family where there was very little nurture and support. And parents, instead of encouraging you and helping you to grow, parents said to you, you're worthless. You will never amount to anything. Your brother or your sister. Ah, you know, how many of you are from families where another brother or another sister is the favored one in the family? A lot of us come from backgrounds like that. And we bear in our thoughts that limitation and the word and the lie of the enemy. This is what you are and you'll never be much more than this. You'll never do much more than this. You'll never accomplish much more. And it's this struggle. And what I want to say to you this morning is this, as we talk about growth, instead of thinking it as one more thing, yes, I should, look at it as God sees you this morning. God sees you this morning, not with your limitations, not by the color of your skin, not by what you have done in the past and your failings, not by your family background, but God sees in you his child and the potential that is there. And when God starts working in you to grow God's image of you, God's plan for you, God's purpose for you is to make you and me into the person, into the man, into the woman, into the child of God that he created you to be not limited by the world, not limited by your sin, not limited by poor choices in the past, but created in the image of God. And God says, I want you to grow, not because it's what you should do because you're a Christian. Now you should be growing, but because God loves you and loves me so much that God says, you do not have to be limited by sin in this world. You do not have to be limited by the lies of the enemy or because you are the, because of the color of your skin or because you're a woman in a man's world or because you're at this level instead of this level or whatever. But God says, I have a plan for you. And if you will work with me, and if you will let my spirit work in you, I will make of you the person that I have planned for you to be. And that's why God wants us to grow. That's why God works in us. Now, for a lot of reasons, but that's one of the main ones. That's one of the big ones. And God doesn't give up on you. I don't care how stubborn you are. I don't care how recalcitrant. You may not even know that word. That's okay. It's a fancy word for stubborn, okay? Or, or unyielding, if you will. Um, ask me later, I'll tell you how. Every once in a while my English teacher comes out, okay? God doesn't, does he care? Yes, he cares, because he wants you to work with him. But the point is, he's not going to give up on you. 
His love commitment to you in bringing you out of darkness and into light has not changed. And his love commitment to you is I am going to help you grow. Not because you should do it because you're a Christian, but because I know what I have. I know what you can be. I know the plans I have for you. Why do you think Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Pr plans to give you what? Hope and a future. This is part of God's plan for you. Is it external? Yes, it's external. But it is much more than external, brothers and sisters. There's an internal plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope, plans to give you a future. That's why all, all the way back in the, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, he says that. Now he was talking to the nation of Israel, but oh, you know, we look at the principles. You look at the principle of that. And oh, if God could say that to stubborn Israel that he had called on whom he had poured forth love and blessing and they had really spit in the face of God, had gone their own way, had been stubborn and this and that. And God says, I still have plans for you. I still have plans for you. Do you know what that does? That gives me hope for me. And guess what? It gives me hope for you too. I sometimes, I pray for you. And you know, I know some of you fairly, fairly well. And sometimes I'll think, God, Lord, <laughs> you know. But God, help me. I don't want to give up. I just keep on praying. I just keep on praying because the Lord's working in me too. And so he wants us to grow up into this full experience of salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't let the enemy lie to you. We sometimes think I can do my own thing or God, I want to do it this way and this is how I'm going to grow. This is my plan. This is how I'm going to improve and so forth and so on. So on. And so often when we're not partnered with the Holy Spirit, it's less, not so often, always, it is less than what God has for us. Yes? You see, that's the lie of the devil in your life. The lie of the devil in your life is that if you go with what you want to do and the way you want to do it, oh, you can really be something. You can really do something. You can really grow into whatever. That's the lie of the devil. You will be the best possible. You will be the most, I don't even know how to express it exactly, but you, when you partner with God, that is when there is the greatest potential the, the fulfillment of potential in your life and in my life. I promise you, I promise you, that is the, that's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. So, let's go back to... That wasn't even in my introduction. I, that was just my introduction. <laughs> let's look quickly at some principles of growth, just as a review. And I do want to go very quickly, but just as a reminder as we look ahead. So, some principles of growth. We've talked about this already. And these are principles that govern spiritual growth in our lives. And the first one is, growth begins with God. And it's not by self-effort and it's not by trying, although we will have to work with God and cooperate with God, right? Um, spiritual growth is unlike natural growth. Spiritual growth is unlike the growth of plants and things like that, where God has built in those things so that, that those things will happen. But we can learn some things. But spiritual growth, if you're going to grow, it's going to take your choice of will. It's going to take your choice of will. So, but it begins with God, okay? I'm getting ahead of myself. It begins with God. What's another principle of growth? Healthy life will reproduce itself. The Spirit of God in you, when, it's gro when, when it is healthy and when you're working with it, it's going to work in you to produce God's life in you. You're not going to have to try to be holy, try to be good, try to be patient. You are going to be those things. Why? Because the Spirit of God is reproducing that in you, and there will be changes. The next one, growth is a process. Remember we talked about this, and I showed you the slide last week of our dear Pastor Renee, 
from a 14 year old to who he is now. Um, and those of you who say, what, I missed that? Oh my. <laughs> you ask somebody else, ask him to show you, I'm sure. It, but it's a, that's right. Yeah, um, we should put that on Facebook, Pastor yeah. Renee. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the look on his face when I said that. He went, <laughs> like that. But it's a process. It's a process. It's not overnight. It's not overnight. And then what's another one of the principles? In life, in that seed, there is potential. There's potential. That's why it says in Second Peter, uh, in life is potential. That's why it sec- says in Second Peter, he has given us, in Second Peter chapter 1, verse... Three, he has given us all we need for life and godliness. And you say, but I don't have it all. That's because it's potential still in your life. And there's a growing into the full experience of salvation. That's 1 Peter, right? That's 1 Peter. Do you see how, how it all fits together? See how it fits together? And so there's potential. And then another principle that goes with growth these last two fit together. You have a God-given free will. Free will. God is so great, brothers and sisters. He could have made you a puppet. You never would have sinned. You never would have failed. But you never would have had a choice. You never would have had a choice. And the people that are going to grow with God are people that have chosen God. They've chosen. The people that are going to be in heaven are people who have chosen. God, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Amen? Amen. He's given us a free will, and we exercise that free will. And the the last principle that we finished with last week, that God chooses to involve you in growth. And we've touched on that already. God chooses to involve you in growth, in spiritual growth. Okay? He chooses to involve you in spiritual growth. So here are some of these. If you say, wait, 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 I'm finishing. I have to finish writing. Uh, when I come back from the States, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare a handout, a printout with some of these things, and then you can look at it and, and make your own notes as well. Um, I was going to do it last night, but by then, mm, it was 11 o'clock, and I thought I'd better pray and go to sleep instead. So I will, I'll do that when I come back. So let's go a little bit further. How do we choose to grow? We just looked at this. God, we have a free will. And God chooses to involve us in our own spiritual growth. So how can we choose to grow? And how do we participate and cooperate with God so that we do grow? It's not a one, two, three step. But let's look at the next slide. All growth. Okay, let's look at it. First one. Ah. One of the ways that we choose to grow is by bringing spiritual growth is bringing nutrients, the next one, into our bodies, They're into our spiritual bodies, okay? You can go ahead and, and go ahead and start clicking them. And it, we start very simply. Healthy growth requires nutrients. That's one of, that's one of the foundation principles. This, I don't, this looks like it could be in Philippines, doesn't it? <laughs> it, does, it? In Mindanao, maybe, right? Okay, this one looks maybe American, maybe, huh? <laughs> Okay, what's the next one, Anne Klein? Show us that one. Uh, may, maybe India, I don't know. Or, 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 or maybe, it, who knows? We don't know. Okay, so, okay. Healthy growth. Y'all are more interested in the pictures and the preaching, aren't you? Okay, that's okay. And I think maybe that one's, I'm not, that's some type of vegetable we can eat, right? I don't remember what that one is. Beets, there we go. Oh, that's right. Do you know Sister Bridget loves beets? And maybe Pastor Renee likes them too. I know it's good for my blood. I, I, oh, mm. when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God, God, why did you make beets? <laughs> it's true, Brother Stephen. So we see the principle, and the principle is what? Go ahead, Ann. Last click. One more click. There we go. Okay. Growth requires nutrients. If there's going to be healthy growth, it's going to require nutrients. You know, when Sister Betty and I were living together uh, at, at Namwapo where we had the small garden, Betty was always so good about this. I, I don't do that as much, but I'd plant things in the garden and um, I didn't mind getting out there, getting hot and sweaty and digging in the mud and whatever. And I'd look and Betty would, Betty would walk out in the garden. She says, 
have you put fertilizer in it? And I said, no, not yet. She just put fertilizer, put fertilizer. And that's what she always did. That was, and she always made sure there was a lot of fertilizer. And one of the things I saw in the natural was that when there was fertilizer, oh, the plants grew strong and healthy and quickly. Me, I was not very good about fertilizer, but I'd plant, 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 and my little plants would come up and they'd be kind of <laughs> yellow and, 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 and kind of pitiful, you know, and kind of pitiful. And Betty would look at it and she'd say, it needs fertilizer. And she was right, and she was right. Just as in the natural, growth requires nutrients, so it is true in the spiritual as well. Now this is not very mysterious, this is not very uh, deep, if you will, but there is a nutrient, there are two necessary nutrients for spiritual growth, and you already know both of them. But the first one, we've already read in 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3. You already know it. Crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow, cry out for it now that you've had a taste. What is Peter talking about here? Now, it can include a wide range of things, but primarily, what is Peter talking about here? Pure spiritual milk is what? The Word of God. The Word of God. And you say, oh, Pastor Jennifer, I've heard this before. Yes, you have, and I'm going to say it again. Because if we're going to grow, if we're going to grow, we're going to have to take the Word of God into our lives. And that's just a, that's just a fact. And you say, that's a little boring, Pastor Jennifer. I'd like one of the secrets of spiritual growth. <laughs> no secret here, brothers and sisters. If we're going to grow in the Lord... We're going to take in the Word of God. And, you're going to, and maybe some of you say, does that mean I should be reading 10 chapters a day? No, it does not mean that at all. Do you know that I started this year with a, one of the programs reading 10 different chapters a day, uh, Horner, uh, Horner's uh, that one? And guess what? I started in it, and the Holy Spirit convicted me, and I have now slowed down. I'm way behind. I'm not reading 10 chapters a day. Do you know why? Because I started to get into the attitude of like... One chapter, two chapters, three chapters. I really did. And so I slowed down. I said, Lord, help me to come at it differently. So I've just slowed down, and I'm just kind of taking time to kind of meditate on the Word of God. So the Word of God, we take it into our lives, and it is something, I love the way Peter talks about it, and look at it, pure spiritual milk. You see, in our Christian lives, we take in all sorts of nutrients, we read testimonies, we read uh, bi biographies and autobiographies at times, we listen to preaching and teaching and all of these things, and that's all part of it, but there is nothing that takes the place of pure spiritual milk. And that means, and, and what that means is unmixed, it's not mixed with other things, okay? And so I, we take in the Word of God, and I encourage you, if you've already gotten in the mentality of reading all the chapters, go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I was making it a checklist. I want to know you through your word. Slow down and start chewing on the word of God. As, really, as simply as that. And I'll tell you, if I've been doing that, guess what? I know I'm not the only one, right? So just, that's right. So just slow down and come back to it rather than a checklist. Say, God, I want to know you through your word. Show me yourself. Show me yourself. And you come back to the word of God because we're to grow into a full experience of salvation. You know, I, I, Pastor Renee and I have talked about this before, and we're going to come to a... We're not going to get to the second nutrient, but do you know what the second nutrient is? Thank you. The Word of God and prayer. Those are the two essential nutrients. And we'll get to prayer the, the next time. So we're going to kind of come to a close as we, as we, as we come to this so you, you, you can get ready. But, you know, I love, I love to be around brand new Christians. Do you? I love, oh, they're so full of excitement, aren't they? God is great. Everything's fresh. It's so wonderful. And you tell them something and they go, oh, wow, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And it's great. There's this wonderful excitement. And they are not in a bad way, but they're babies, aren't they? They're babies. And everything, oh, all the emotions are there. And that's great. But they're babies. And if I were to come back a year 
or two later and they are still spiritual babies then I don't love it anymore that's right there's something wrong because we begin as babies but we have to grow we have to grow up that's right we have to grow up that is God's how many of you you've had children and your baby was born and you laid eyes upon that baby and that baby may have been wrinkled and red or sometimes a little bit green because as they're as they're born because of the because of the the some of the body fluids on the baby as it's born their head coming through the birth canal was probably sort of misshapen right because the bones aren't whatever and you looked at that baby and I, I don't want to say some of the things <laughs> let me just let me let me set a guard <laughs> upon my since I don't have children of my physical children of my own but parents you looked at that baby and you thought <gasps> just the most beautiful little thing you've ever seen in the world right <laughs> just just the most beautiful and God has made us that way I believe but let me ask you something what would happen if a year later your baby still looked like that <laughs> seriously how happy would you be then you wouldn't be because God wants us to grow God wants us to grow and the purpose of birth and, and as we come to a close this morning we've got about two or three more minutes Stephen you can just go ahead and start playing just as we come to a close this morning the purpose of your spiritual birth was not so that you could be this great baby but it is so that you and I will grow up in him and we will be all what he plans for us to be are you already what God plans for you to be? Let me ask you that. Are you? Yes or no? Yes. You are? I'm not yet. I'm not yet. I am in some areas. I am. But there are areas where I know I'm not yet who God wants me to be. And so this is one of the nutrients I'm taking into my life because I want to grow. I've already told you I've asked God to make me a person of prayer. That's the other one that we'll get to. But I, I, I do, brothers and sisters, I want these nutrients in my life. I do. I want the Word of God through preaching, through studying, through your words of encouragement to me as you bring a word of encouragement from the Word of God to me. Ah, I grow. From hearing Pastor Renee speak as pastors, we sit there. I want to tell you something. We don't just say, oh, well, Pastor Renee's preaching now. I'll preach next Sunday. I need to receive from the Word of God. So I'm going to ask you just as we come to a close this morning, just to close your eyes. And I'd like you just to think about, don't look at anybody else. This is just you and God. Stephen is playing. And I'd like to ask you just to just talk with God for just a minute this morning and just kind of say, okay, God, what are you saying to me? And how do I need to respond? Not because Pastor Jennifer said something, said something to me but God how do you want me to respond Lord I've heard truth this morning and some of it I've heard before but Lord I have heard your word to me this morning and I don't want to get up and walk out of here and say oh great it's meet and greet let me go get some coffee and forget this Lord we come to you we come to you Oh God, each one of us, each one of us, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, physically and spiritually, from the most stubborn of us, Lord, to the most pliable of each one of us. Lord, for those of us who are going through such hard times this morning and such testings, and Lord, for those of us who just seem to be living in the sunshine of your love, God, we want to grow so that we can be the people that you've called us to be the plans that you have to prosper us and give us hope and a future Lord work that out work that out in our lives 
Lord, I pray that you'd speak to your people this morning, not in guilt. And Lord, I come against any attitude or spirit of guilt this morning about one more thing that I should be doing. And instead, oh Lord, what do you have for me? Lord, not something, a whip coming from behind, but Lord, a beacon of light ahead of me that pulls my heart onward and helps my will to choose you and your ways in my life again this day. And then tomorrow morning when I wake up and I don't feel so spiritual, and I don't feel like running after you and feeding on your word. And then the day after that, and the day after that, God, help us to get a glimpse of what you have for us and the person that you will make us into as we follow after you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.